and It's time for The Pet Show with America's favorite pet expert, Warren Eckstein. Warren is the author of How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want and How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. He's here to answer all your pet and animal questions. And now, Warren Eckstein. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to The Pet Show. Is your beagle behaving a bit too bossy? Do your Persian kittens seem a little paranoid? Are your terriers in need of some deep, deep therapy? Well, if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment, and really want to understand your dog and cat's behavior, 
almost as good as they understand yours. If you're confused about your dog or cat or just want to improve their lifestyle, you know what to do. Stay tuned because once again, right here, right now, it is time for the Pet Show. America's first and only real pet psychology, pet training, pet behavior, and of course, pet lifestyle show. So hop up on my couch. Uh, bring those furry little buddies with you because it is that time once again to let the animal analyzing begin. Hello, everybody. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show, the place where we absolutely, positively, never doubt, never hesitate, admit that we love, adore, and respect pets and animals as much as you do. By the way, if you want to join me on the ever-growing Pet Show family, if you have a question or want to share a comment or just brag a little bit about your dog or cat, maybe you have a question about your dog or cat's getting along with other dogs when you take them for a walk. Maybe you're inviting a new cat into your home and the cat that's there is not thrilled about it. Maybe you take your dog for a walk and it's like holding on to a freight train because he's pulling you all over the place. Maybe your cat looks at a litter box and says, nah, 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 use it yourself. Maybe that rescue puppy isn't housebroken. Well, you get the idea. That's what we do here on the Pet Show every week and have been for over four decades. I can't believe it. Over four decades, we've been helping people resolve any issues that they may be confronting with their dogs or cats or a lot more likely any issues that their dogs or cats may be confronting with them. So if you have a question or comment or just want to tell a great story about your dog or cat and maybe you have an amazing rescue story or you want to just talk about a dog or cat that you grew up with and how they may have changed your life. I mean, I don't think I would be anywhere where I am right now if it were not for the uh, uh, the animals that I grew up with. They made the entire difference in my life. So if you have a childhood pet you remember or just that recent dog or cat you adopted, I'd love to hear from you. Great time to Give me a call. The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-KRLA. If you're more of a numbers person, that's 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. I do have a few things to give away on today's show. I'll give away some a Lucy pet food on today's show, or maybe an air horn or two. So great time to give me a call. The phone number, 866 866-870- KRLA. So if you have a question or a comment, just want to share a great story. You know, it's amazing to me how many emails I get during the week on my website from people asking me questions about their dogs or cats. And it's great that they do that. And I answer as many as I can on my YouTube channel. By the way, if you're not on YouTube, you should subscribe. YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. And the reason I say that is very often, I don't have as, as much time to go into the depth I'd like to go into with you guys. So if you have a question or a comment or want to find out why your dog or cat may be behaving a certain way and it's totally baffling to you, a great time to give me a call. Again, that phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way uh, to get through to the pet show. As I said, plenty of time for your calls, a few things to give away on the show as well. So let me tell you what I have planned for today's show. As always, you know that your question your comments are always my priority, no matter what they be. If you just want to brag about a dog or cat that you rescued, I'd love to hear from you guys as well. But I got some real interesting topics to go over today. I'd like to get your intake on, on them as well. A brand new study, a brand, and this is my feline lovers out there. A brand new study reveals that cats literally fall into five different personality types. One, two, three, four, five different personality types. So later on today's show, what I'll be doing is we're going to share those five types and you can find out what type of personality uh, your cats have. And if you want to call me ahead of that and you think you know what type of personality your cat has, great time to call me. Again, that number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5700. 52. Also coming up on today's show, you know, we say an awful lot of things in front of our dogs. We do. We say an awful lot of things. So uh, coming up, you know, your dogs may remember a lot more than you think they do. We're going to take a look at what episodic memory is all about. Episodic memory. How does it relate to your dogs? So from my, uh, from me to you, just be really careful what you say in front of your dogs. Uh, they don't forget so easily. Also coming up on today's show. Gosh, I love this topic. If you, 
if you live or have lived with a teenage dog, and who hasn't? Remember, just like teenage humans, they may find what annoys you and what gets them the most attention. Is your dog a juvenile delinquent? Have you ever lived with a juvenile delinquent dog? I'd love to hear from you as well. 866-870-5752, 866-870-KRLA. That is the phone number here on The Pet Show. Also coming up. What if science actually allowed you to ask your dogs and cats questions? What if they allowed me to say, hey, 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 hey Molly, Willie, uh, am I a good pet guardian? Hey, Molly and Willie, did I do this right? Hey, Molly and Willie, are you enjoying life? What questions? If you were allowed to ask your dog or cat questions, what would you ask them? I'd love to hear from you. Great time to call me, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. As always, I allowed plenty of time to answer all of your questions and listen to your amazing comments as well. Uh, so if your pet is jumping, chewing, maybe you have a cat that's scratching everything in the house, maybe your cat's totally confused about the litter box. I actually helped two people with that this week. Maybe that beautiful red rescue dog isn't housebroken, uh, maybe he doesn't get along with other dogs, or he just believes that if he sees it, he must hump it, great time to give me a call. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. As I said, plenty of time for your calls, lots of, uh, uh, lots of uh, time to answer all your pet and animal questions. So here's the question of the day. Do you have the guts to answer it? <laughs> I'd love to hear from you guys, because you'll make me feel a whole lot better. What question... Would you ask your dog or your cat if you had the opportunity? I mean, I talk to them all the time, and and sometimes I can kind of know what they're saying, but what question would you ask your dogs and cats? Am I a good guardian? Do I take you out enough? Do you like the food I'm giving you? Are you enjoying life? Do you share the same interests as I do watching TV Uh, because they watch TV with me all the time? So that's the bottom line. The question is, what question would you ask your dogs and cats? I would love to hear from you. Again, 866-870-KRLA. Once again, uh, you know, I'm spending a lot more time. uh, uh, I bought a location and broadcasting today from beautiful Arizona where it's uh, maybe, maybe in the 90s today. And everyone's telling me, Warren, Warren, wait, 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 another month. You're going to be sorry. Uh, but they also say, Warren, don't worry, it's a dry heat. Yeah, well, so's a torch, a dry heat. Anyway, the bottom line is I'm loving it here. It's relaxing. I miss I miss Santa Monica. I mean, I, I lived in Santa Monica for almost 30 years. A beautiful, beautiful place. And, and I really, really loved it. But I'm glad to be in Arizona at this point. So if you have any questions or comments, great time to call me. Um, 866-870-KRLA. 866-870-5752. That is the way uh, to get through to the, to the pet show. <laughs> I've got some calls coming in. I'm going to get to those calls in, in just a minute or two. But I, I really want to stress today. And and I'm stressing this for a really important reason. You know, I got a lot of texts this week, a lot of emails, a lot of questions on my, uh, either on my Facebook or my Instagram or any of my social media pages. And people are always saying to me, is it possible, is it possible that I love my dogs and my cats more than the majority of people I meet? A lot of people, and I kind of asked that question, a lot of people are kind of embarrassed to answer it. Um, I, I don't know if love's the right word, but, you know, there's a relationship that we have with our dogs and a relationship that we have with our cats that's so entirely different than a relationship we have with other people. Uh, dogs and cats don't have egos the way people do. Uh, dogs and cats aren't always questioning you the way people do. Dogs and cats don't care what you look like the way people do. And I think that's one of the reasons that my entire life uh, people have always considered me a little eccentric because I've always felt more comfortable uh, around the dogs and around the cats. I'll give you a prime example. You guys know I was the uh, contributing pet editor uh, for the Today Show for over 15 years, and, and I spent a lot of time there. And very often uh, people would be saying, where's Warren? Why isn't Warren sitting up here? Or Faye Dano, Dunaway's in there. Or Al Pacino's in there. Or, or someone else is in the group. Why isn't Warren up there hanging out with these people? And they can't find me. Where's Warren? Warren's downstairs. Warren's hanging out with the dogs. Warren's hanging out with the cats. Warren's hanging out with the animals he brought to bring on the show. Um, I'm sure a therapist would have a great time with me. But I just feel more comfortable around animals than I do around people. And always have. Always have. I mean, I was a shy kid. You never know it now. And, and I joke all the time that no one would go in my room because there was all the animals there. And, and, and there was a creek behind my house. And I just always felt so much more comfortable being around animals. I guess it was that 
non-demanding relationship that just accept me for who I am. Ah, so big deal, your ears are dirty. Oh, Warren, you got an other D in geometry. Oh, Warren, I just, that relationship is so, so based on love, not based on what's good for you, what's good for me, just based on love, based on that, uh, that non-demanding relationship. I, that's the way I feel. I mean, I may be a little crazy about it, but that's the way I feel. Do you feel that way as well? Do you feel more comfortable around your pets than you do around people? I get criticized all the time from even, even, you know, uh, 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 colleagues here at the radio station and some of the other radio stations I do, and they say, Warren, come on now, you can't possibly really mean that you enjoy being around animals more than you enjoy being around people. And my response is, well, you hang out with yourself for a little while. See if you don't agree with me then. I bet you will. Love to hear from you guys. 866-870-CAROLEY. Again, any questions you may have, jumping, humping, digging, scratching, not using a litter box, not getting along with each other. Uh, any questions you may have about your dog or cat, great time to give me a call. I do have a few things to give away on the show as well. Again, 866-870-CAROLEY. 866-870-5752. So here's what I'm doing. In my yard here, and, you know, there's not a whole lot of greenery uh, in Arizona. Uh, so in my yard, uh, there's a lot of, of, I guess, stones, you know, rocks and stones. And, and I'm watching Molly and Willie, and they're tiptoeing over them, and they're not real comfortable on them. So, so I, I ordered a, uh, a, a, a large <laughs> 10 by 12 uh, uh, artificial turf. I, I just want to... I can have it done, but I just want to put it out there and see how the dogs use it. So far, the only person on the artificial turf is, is me. <laughs> dogs, you know, and I understand it because when I opened it up, it had a very chemical smell. And I, I got it from the top company, so I just had to wash it down. But the bottom line is I'm trying to get the dogs more comfortable. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I don't like seeing them kind of tiptoe on the rocks. I want to make them as comfortable as I possibly can. So let me put down some artificial turf and, and see if they like it. Plus the fact I bought this special artificial turf. Spent a lot of money on this, by the way, so that it doesn't really uh, retain the heat, uh, and therefore it's not going to be hot in the summertime, which it already is here in Arizona. So, yeah, that, I'll, I'll send some photos. I'll post some photos this week of Molly and Willie getting introduced to artificial turf. And as you said, so far, the only person that's walked on it is yours truly. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Uh, let me do this. Let me take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to speak to Joanne in Hacienda Heights. We got Lou in uh, San Diego. Do have a couple of open lines, 866-870-5752, 866-870-KRLA. I pointed these out last week. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, behind me are two of my favorite books. I think they're out of print now. One is called How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. The other one's called How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want. Uh, all my books have been published by Random House. So the bottom line is the reason I bring that up, I don't know if they're available, but if you go to, uh, I guess, on Amazon.com and you check out uh, How to Get Your Dog and How to Get Your Cat, they're two of my favorite books from years and years ago. They're large picture kind of coffee table books, and, and I wrote the, the, the articles, but some of the photos are amazing. So check out either How to Get Your Dog or How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> those books are long gone, but the bottom line is I really think that if you love cats or dogs, you'll enjoy one of those. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. A quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Listen, one of the most important things you can do for your dogs and cats we are back on the pet show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Great time to give me a call if you have a question or a comment. Uh, the question of the day is pretty simple. Uh, don't be embarrassed. If you had the opportunity to ask your dog a or your cat a question or your horse, what question would you ask your pet if you had that opportunity? Do you really love me? Is life really good? Do you really want to go for a ride? Do you like this one? Do you really like that guy's next door neighbor crazy? What questions would you ask your pets? I'd love to hear from you. The phone number here, 866 866- 8670 krla 8668705752 i uh, still coming up the five distinct personality types of cats if you think you have a guess of what type of personality your cat has i'd love to hear from you as well um 866-870-KRLA uh, that is the way uh, to get through so let's go start out with a phone call let's go to joanne in hacienda heights hi joanne how are you very well um, first of all, I've met you, but it was about 20 years ago. 20 years ago? I, I, I was just a kid. <laughs> and, um, okay, my, quickly, my question. No, no, where, where, where did we meet? No, where did we meet? I'm curious now. Um, at the store opening in Peony Hills Mall area. Well, that is a long time ago. <laughs> This is a long time ago. Anyway, what can I do? I see from your question, you want to know how to keep ants away from your cat dishes. Yes. 
That's a tough one. It's a tough one. I mean, you know, there are ways. Years ago, I, I remember there was uh, someone who had figured out that he could put double stick tape around all his doorways the cats would never uh, the uh, ants would never come in the house but then if you did that around the cat food bowls the cat would never uh, uh, drink uh, or eat that I-, I don't have a really good answer for it. are you are this you're about inside right um i i tried using um spraying vinegar around the bowl and that did not work at all yeah, maybe you should put some um, I, lettuce, and t- lettuce and tomatoes there. Maybe the ants would have enjoyed it a lot more. I, I don't know. I've never heard of vinegar working, and I've heard different types of, of soil working. I've heard I, of salt working. I, I used to use uh, Skin So Soft, and that you know, worked, but that's yeah, gotten very pricey. Is it? It's real. I, you know, I don't really know the best way. I, obviously, uh, I'm assuming, once again, these are inside the house, right? Yes, totally. Yeah. And have you tried raising them? Raising? I'm sorry. What I would do, what, here's what I would try to do. It's actually healthier for the cat as well, and this goes for dog people also. If you can raise the cat's dish, you can buy them on the market. They're not expensive, raised dog and cat food dishes. If you can raise them a little bit, that might be really, really beneficial. And then what I would recommend that maybe you do is along the, the, the legs of the stand is maybe just cut squares of double stick tape. Just put them under the legs so it won't affect the dog or the cat, but any ants trying to crawl up would be affected by it. So that would be about my best advice at this point. No chemicals. I don't believe in that. As a matter of fact, God, this is going to sound so crazy, but you know me by now, Joanne. Uh, when I see ants outside, I try to take a piece of cardboard, let them crawl on it, and, and kind of move them to a safer area. That's just just I, everything in my life, you know, deserves a, an opportunity. But that would be my best approach. I would get a raised feeding dish for the cats at this point, put a little bit of square of double stick tape on the bottom of the uh, the legs, and that would prevent the the, uh, the ants from getting up to the food. And once they realize they're not getting up to the food, what's the point? Good idea. Very good idea. Yeah, much that appreciated. Is, oh, that is my job. So, what kind of what kind of cats do you have? Well, right now I have a an American short haired. Her name is Larimar. Larimar. So, let me ask you, you a have, question. If, if Larimar, years, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You helped me years ago when I lost uh, Topaz, and I was thinking of adopting Jade and his mother Pearl. You helped me. Well, I'm so glad to hear. So let me ask you a question. If your cat could literally right now, if you could ask your cat a question, what would you ask them? I don't know. She, she talks all the time, and she <laughs> says something, and I answer her, and she talks back to me. She oh, doesn't whine. She doesn't moan. She, she, she is just great, uh-huh. and you get- especially with the lockdown. Couldn't have been a better, a better find. And you know you're absolutely right. So I, I appreciate that phone call. You give her a big hug and a kiss me. I have I have uh, found also that the bottom line is that so many people during the uh, pandemic uh, have established such an incredible relationship with their pets. I guess that's what they uh, they uh, they could do at that point. Yeah. So that's the question of the day. I'd like to get more. What question would you ask your dogs or your cats or your horses if you had that opportunity? Uh, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. Uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to San Diego and Lou. Hi, Lou. How do you do? What's up, Lou? Oh, hi. How's it going? Good morning. Um, it's going good. great. How's it going with you? <laughs> oh, my God. This is wonderful. I, I just, if I had, I just wanted to tell you, if I could ask Cammy, my little Pomeranian rescue. Um, one question would be, why she still chases cars and skateboarders and and people why do, on why, why do you think? Wheels. Why do you think she does that? I think um, I, I think she's trying to protect us. I guess. No, how about the fact that she always how about the fact that she always wins? When she balks or chases, the car goes away. She wins. When the skateboard is in front and she balks and chases, the skateboard goes away and she wins. It's the <laughs> same reason that dogs bark at the mailman every day. The mailman comes, he oh. makes some noise at the front door, the dog reacts, the mailman runs away, and the dog says, "Hey, I won that battle." So, it's interesting, but I you know, I get this all the time cuz so many dogs do chase cars. It's it's a moving thing and it's instinctively sometimes to do that. So, you got to be very cautious but the bottom line is the reason they do yeah. that is the car always runs away and the dog always wins saying that they did exactly what they were supposed to do Does that make sense to you 
Yes, it does. It does. You're right. Because they always go away. And then she looks at me and then she just carries on. Like, yeah, it, it, it's, like just nothing ama- it's just amazing. How old, how old is oh, you say? Pomeranian you had? Is that what you said? Yes. She's a little rescue. She's three years old now. Yeah, they're just amazing dogs. Pom- Pomeranians have no idea they're little, do they? I know. They think she's they're so adorable. Do, do, do you think one of your horns could help us if we get a little horn to, to blow or something? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, we can do that. I'm, you know, let me do this. I'm going to put you on hold, and the lovely Suzette's going to pick up, and we will send you one of those, uh, one of those air horns. And I do appreciate that uh, that phone call. Great call, by the way. Eight six six eight six six eight seventy K R L A. It's true. A lot of people, you know, there are trainers out there that I've seen use electronic collars and, and, and other means and methods and stupid things to to try to stop the dog from chasing the car. And there are much much better ways to do it with exposure and socialization to get the dog uh, to respond properly. But that's why dogs chase cars. It really really is because the car runs away and the dog always wins. As I said, the same thing with the mailman, UPS driver, all of that makes all the difference in the world. As a matter of fact, I recently heard from a client that had a, uh, I'm not a client, actually a listener, that had a, 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 a Labradoodle, and when the uh, the driver, the mailman, came every day, uh, the dog would not bark. He would just go to the front door and say hello to the guy, and that's because the guy never ran away, took the time to introduce himself to the dog, and therefore the dog had no need to bark or chase him because he knew who he was, and there was no fear of him running away and the dog winning at that point. Keeps me going, folks. Uh, let's do, oh, God, let me do this. Do I got to take a break? Yeah, let me do this. Let me take a break. When we come back, here's the deal. We're going to go to uh, Nancy and Paulo's Verdes. We got Mimi calling from Texas. We got Kathy calling from El Segundo. Ah, she's got some good information about getting rid of ants. Get to me with that. I would want to hear that. Again, the number, eight eight six six eight seight seventy 870 krla eight six six eight seven zero five seven five two. 5752 Just before we take this break, Let me just say this, and I'm going to say it a couple of times. If you are not following me on my YouTube channel, and you're not subscribing to my YouTube channel, do it. I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. I don't know where I'm going to be next year, but I'm always going to be on my YouTube channel. So check out YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein, YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein, and subscribe. It's free. And if you go there, you'll see I share a lot of great information there. Uh, and you can even watch some videos when I was the Creature Keeper for the new Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was the Creature Keeper on the new Mickey Mouse Club. You know, it's on that posted behind me, but it's true. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Quick break, then back to your phone calls. I'm Warren next time. You're listening to The Pet Show. Ah, uh, they're all top cats here on The Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Great time to give me a call, 866-870-KRLA. Got any questions or comments? Jumping, humping, digging, scratching, uh, not housebroken, not using a litter box, not getting along with other dogs, doesn't like people. Great time to give me a call, 866-870-KRLA. Just before I get back to the phone lines, and I will in just a second, the question of the day is, what question would you ask your dog, your cat, your horse, whatever type of pet you have, what question would you ask them if you could. Again, 866-870-CAROLA, the phone number. Uh, just before we get back to the phones, you know, I get a lot of questions uh, that are sent to me during the weekend. Sometimes I get to answer them. That's what my YouTube channel is all about. A lot of that's answering questions for listeners. Um, and I got one this week about a uh, from a, a couple that recently adopted a dog uh, named Tucker, and uh, they were having a lot of issues with Tucker. So my response was pretty easy to them. And a lot of people don't understand the concept of when a dog is adopted, Making sure that you're predictable is critical. So here's what I wrote back. Be predictable. Set up a daily feeding, playtime, and grooming routine to give Tucker a sense of security. Consistency, continuity, may help reduce his anxiety and encourage him to feel more comfortable in his new environment. And that's so important because so many of my listeners, you guys are amazing, but so many of my listeners have adopted uh, their dogs from shelters, uh, humane organizations, rescues, or even off the street. And it's so important to remember that continuity is so critical when you're taking a, a, a dog's learn through associa- the associate memory. So when you're taking a dog uh, out of a situation, and we don't know what the situation what it was. It could be a horrible situation. In many cases, it is. And bless you guys for resolving those. Uh, but just giving that predictability can make all the difference in the world. All the difference in the world. All right, let me take another phone call right now. We are going to Mimi calling from Austin, Texas. Hey, Mimi, welcome to the show. Hey, Warren. How are you? I could not be better. How's everything in Austin today? It's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's always so, fine in Austin. Um, yeah, right now, right now, I don't have a pet. Um, my cat passed in uh, October, and my oh, dog sorry. passed in November. They were both oh, seniors. So, 
Uh, but they but got along with each other till the they got along with each other. They had each other till the very end. Right? I will I will get another pet. But they had but each other till the very end. Problem with ants in the cat food. Yeah. yeah. So what you do is you take a bigger bowl than the cat bowl, fill it with water, and then put the uh, put the bowl with the cat food um, in that. You know it. Lay it in the bowl with the water. I mean, it doesn't get wet, but that will keep the ants away. It's an interesting concept. So in other words, you take a larger bowl, you put water in that bowl, and then what you do is take the bowl that the cat's actually eating out of and put it on top of that bowl so when the ants try to get to the food, they fall into the water and drown. Right. Put it. Yeah, you put it inside that bowl. Inside oh, you murderer. Inside. You murderer, you... <laughs> You, you ant killer, you. I, 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 I get it. I, under, I understand the concept. But, yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. It is a very interesting and creative idea. It works. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, yeah. that's why I do this show because, you know, there's no way that I have all the answers. And you guys always come up with some amazing answers. In fact, there's some, uh, a couple of other people up there, I think, that also have uh, uh, this situation where uh, how to prevent ants from getting to the cat food or the dog food and, and whatever. But that was a great, that's a great, so you actually did that. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it worked. And I had even moved the cat food bowl off the floor onto a higher level, and that didn't work without me putting that uh, water bowl out uh, there. So, oh, me, me. It, yeah. you know, because I know yeah, you yeah. mentioned to her, move, you know, pick up the bowl off the floor, but the ants still climbed to where it was. So that's why they don't know. Did you hear but, water bowl there. Did you hear what I said about the, the on, on all feet of the stand to put double stick tape? Yeah. This way, the ants can't get to the thing to crawl up. That's why I did that. So, but there's a your idea. I think your idea is even better than mine. You want to do my show yeah, today? I liked it. It was easy and it worked, and uh, it was fine. And you know, maybe the ants were unhappy, but everybody else was happy. So, well, me, me, me. So, so here's my question. Now, I know your dogs pass, but if you had the opportunity to go back in time and ask your dog or your cat a question, what question would you ask them? Well, I was asking them something that I could answer. I would ask them, "Isn't the best? Isn't this the best life you've ever had?" <laughs> and you and you know what the answer <laughs> would be, hundred percent. Anyway, Mimi, thank you for calling. Keep listening, and let me know when you're ready to get thank that new you. pet. Okay. I will. Thanks, Lauren. Oh, uh, you have a great you have a great day. I appreciate that call. Uh, great time to give me a call. I do have a couple of open lines. The phone number eight seven 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 two five eight two five five eight seven 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 two five eight two five five. That is the way to get through. Uh, let's go to. Uh, God, let's go to, who was up next? Let's take another Ann call, and then we'll go to Amy. First, we're going to go to Kathy and El Segundo. Hey, Kathy, what's your, what's your way of getting rid of ants? Hello, Warren. I have uh, two ways. Uh, on the outside, I feed three feral cats, and I bought diatomaceous earth, and I spread it around under the bowls and under the water, and the ants will not go near it. Nor will any other uh, bugs. Nor will any other bugs. Pardon? <laughs> Nor oh, will any uh, other bugs. They hate that. No, but <laughs> um, and indoors, I uh, I sometimes do coffee host at church, and there's ants that come in during rainy days, <laughs> yeah. and I found cinnamon, and cinnamon works fabulous. They don't like cinnamon. <laughs> Interesting. So, so you cinnamon all around the edges, and it works. Really? So ants, I didn't know. I see, I learned something every day. I did not know that ants do not like cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon. Cinnamon works. They don't like cinnamon. Uh, so so it, would take someone go, it would take someone who goes to church all the time to figure that out. <laughs> no there you doubt, go. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. What a great, I really appreciate that call, and uh, I will donate a gift. I will send it to us, some rescue or humane organization. I great. Thank that you for calling. Good. You have a great day now. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Um, Amy, we're going to get to you in just a sec. Anybody out there have a teenage dog? What's a teenage dog? A year old, 10 months old, two years old? You know, teenage dogs will find it very fun and interesting. They will find every possible way to annoy you. Why would the dog want to annoy you? Well, maybe it's not the dog's fault. Maybe it's your fault. So we're going to talk about that. Is your dog a juvenile delinquent? And why is that? 
Is it your fault or is it just the dog is that way? We're going to talk about that when we come back. The phone number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. I'd love to hear from some more people about what they would ask their dog or cat or their horse or their pig or their chicken or their duck, whatever type of pet they had. If they could, what would you say? Do you really love me? Am I a good pet guardian? Do I feed you the right food? Do I tell you I love you enough? Do I take you outside enough? Do I spend enough time with you? Do I introduce you to enough people? Do you like the kind of car I purchased? Do you like the table scraps I give you when I'm not supposed to? Those are the type of questions I would assume that people would ask their pets. So what questions would you ask your dog or cat? Give me a call. I'd love to hear from you. The phone number 866-870-KRLA. I still have some uh, Lucy Pet Food to give away on the show today. I have some Kitty Lickies to give away on the show as well. So a great time to call me, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Too. That is the way uh, uh, to get through to the show. Uh, let me do this. Uh, let me take. Uh, let me take. Speaking about uh, Lucy Pepper, let me take a quick break here. Talk about Lucy Pepper. We come back. Amy Dennis. We'll get right to your calls. Do have a couple of open lines. Eight six six eight seventy K R L A. The phone number. And coming up on the show still, um, there are five specific types of cat personalities according to a brand new study. Five different types. I'm going to share those with you later, but what type of personality does your cat have? Is your cat withdrawn, outgoing? Let me hear from some of my feline lovers out there. I'd love to hear what type of personality you think your cats have, and then when I do this story coming up a little bit later, we'll find out how close we got. So if you are owned by a cat, you heard me right. If you are owned by a cat, number one, I want to know, I definitely want to know uh, what type of personality you believe your cat has. Give me a call, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, and Maybe I will send you some of the commercial that I'm going to do right now. Some kitty lickies for your best friend. Uh, 866-870-CAROLA. A quick break, then right back to your phone calls. And we are back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. Great time to give me a call. Question of the day is, well, any question you have, whether it be uh, how to resolve any issues you may be having with your dog or cat, jumping, humping, digging, uh, the cat is scratching, not using a litter box, doesn't get along with the new cat, uh, your cat doesn't come when you call him, lost his appetite, any questions you may have, great time to give me a call. Uh, The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-KRLA. 5752. And the question of the day is what would you ask your dog or your cat or whatever pet you have if you had the opportunity to ask them a question? I do this all the time with Molly and Willie. How you guys doing? How you guys feeling today? What can I do? You want to go there? You want to I always ask my pets questions, but that's me. So I want you to help me feel normal once again, which is not easy to do. How many people out there would ask their dog or cat a question? And if you did, what question would you ask them? Give me a call. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, maybe I'll send you a great gift. 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Lots of great stuff coming up on today's show. We're going to get right to you in a second, uh, uh, Amy Dennis. Before we do that, a brand new study from the University of Georgia suggests that fostering a pet Fostering a pet is an amazing way for people to curb their feelings of loneliness. The study found that the feeling of loneliness was down almost 90%. And they also said that co-living with a companion animal can significantly enhance your physical and emotional well-being. Who's going to argue with that? Does anyone feel that, that, that not living with a dog or cat is? I think every one of my listeners would agree with me that living with a dog or cat is amazing for you in terms of making you feel uh, uh, emotional health and, and physically better. Just to get up and walk the dog or, or just to have a negotiate or argue with your dog is, is good for your psychological well-being. Believe me, we have some pretty intense conversations, me, Molly, and Willie. Since we've been in Arizona, we have some, some talks lately. And somehow, I always do what they want. Hey, Amy, Huntington Beach, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, Warren. Hi. Um, Hi. Thank you for the gift I got uh, about three weeks ago. It's um, your uh, Hugs and Kisses ca- uh, cat vitamins. Yeah. And uh, I called into the show about a month ago because um, my cat is now 15 and she uh, has to take thyroid medicine. And you had suggested, and I was putting her pills in tuna water from a can of tuna, and you suggested um, to go to these compound pharmacies. Well, I did do that, and I got some samples. And they gave me tuna and chicken, but it's like an oil, kind of like olive oil that people would yeah. would have. She didn't like any of that. So huh. once I got the hugs and kisses from you, and I'd like to know more about your products, I'm looking at the Lucy Pets online, but I don't know um, if the uh, 
the kitty lickens is something I could put the pill in and make her, you know, have her take that. But but the hugs and kisses vitamins, I'm grinding that up with the pill, and she goes crazy over them. <laughs> she absolutely is out of her mind crazy for the hugs and kisses vitamins. You, well, and you know, I seems to be I'm my glad, way of I'm glad the, the, the pill. But I'm glad you can get the pill down here. No, I'm glad you can get the pill down here with the hugs and kisses. But let me I, let me let, let me just stop you. Else, uh, me, that, and I'm thinking maybe the maybe the um the uh, what is it called again? The, the kitty licking would be something I could put the pill in um, because I just put that stuff before I feed her, and I have to give her a pill twice a day now for her thyroid. So, listen, she's she's going to come to you asking for the pills between the hugs and kisses. And the kitty lickies, and I'll tell you why, okay? The bottom line is this. Dogs and cats, for that matter, uh, they eat with their nose. We talked about that an awful lot on the show. And getting them to take a pill sometimes is difficult. So what I'm going to recommend is you continue using, obviously, the Hugs and Kisses cat formula. But I'm also going to recommend you use the Kitty Lickies. I just sent you something three weeks ago, so I can't send it again. But you can go to their website and get the Kitty Lickies. And and let me tell you, I want you to alternate. I want you to alternate some days the Hugs and Kisses, some days the Kitty Lickies. Because if you focus on, you know, if you eat vanilla ice cream every day, you may want chocolate one day, okay? So it's just like if the cat gets used to the same thing over and over again. So I would go back and forth and switch between the kitty lickies and the hugs and kisses supplements. You're going to have one healthy and one happy cat. That's all I got to say. Um, it, it, and I noticed that your picture was on the hugs and kisses. Do you have other products uh, other, other than that vitamin that you had sent me? No, just the, right. Just the, well, we have the hugs and kisses vitamin supplement. We also have the uh, uh, for dogs, and we have one for cats. Um, a lot of no, I don't have any other products with my name on it. However, if you go to my uh, my website, thepetshow.com, uh, we do have available. You know the those air horns that you talk about that I refer. Uh, we also have uh, right. uh, some Nature Vet products for sale there as well. As a matter of fact, I don't know how much longer this is going to last, but there's some great cat products as well. If you go to my website, we have a Bogo. I like to look up BOGO. I didn't know what BOGO meant. Buy one, get one. If you go to my website, right. only on only on Nature Vet products only. And while supplies last, if you buy one, you get one free. So check out thepetshow.com for that. And check out uh, lucypetproducts.com for the kitty lickies. Okay. And then I have to answer your question of the day. Of course. Which is what what of I course. ask my cat. And that is, um, I bought this catnip years ago because it got 15 now. And it had these little pom-pom balls in it. And um, the catnip is all gone, and the pom-poms are still around the house. And every now and then I'll be watching TV or just doing some paperwork or something, and she puts it in her mouth, and she starts running around the house with it, and she screams and, and, and shouts to the top of her lungs like it's her baby or something. And it's so hilarious. She puts it in her mouth. She looks like Hitler, you know, just this little <laughs> pom-pom in her mouth. And she's like, and I'm like, Cooney, why are her name is Cooney? Why are you screaming like that? And she just goes crazy. And it's just you know, at fifteen, at know. fifteen years, no, at fifteen years old. First of all, as you heard me talk earlier about the associated memory, there are certain associations. For example, I remember one of my dogs had a toy, and I had moved at that point. I had my sanctuary in upstate New York with all my pigs and chickens and all the dogs, thirty-seven dogs, and God knows how many cats and other animals. And I had a dog, and we moved there. This dog loved this one toy. It was Ty. It was the Buster Brown dog. He loved this one toy absolutely. But I lost it in the movie. Move. Somehow, six to eight months later, that toy turned up. Actually, it was in my suitcase. That toy turned up. When I showed it to Tig at that point, it was like uh, he went into a state of nirvana. Wow, I found my baby again. And he would walk around so proud with his tail up in the air. And this is mine. So, yeah, they, they, get, it t- they get attached to, to certain things. And very often that attachment is almost, even though it may not be a, a living object, to them it's something so important to their comfort zone. And, and the way they feel that to them it is really a living thing. Great question, by the way. Anyway, let me know how you make out with the, uh, uh, with the kitty lickies and how the, uh, uh, the cat's taking the thyroid pills as well. Absolutely. And thank you so much for the hugs and kisses. She goes crazy just to smell. She cries. I mean, I, I was giving her temptations in the past. She used to like them. Now she's older, doesn't care for them anymore. As soon as I open the jar in the morning, she's like, meow, meow, meow. And I'm like, and I'm like oh, my gosh, Cooney, calm down. 
She absolutely <laughs> loves it. I don't know what she put in that product, but she is crazy for it. Whatever's it, <laughs> and take, and whatever it, whatever's in there, she really, whatever's in there, really, really healthy. Great call, by the way. I really do appreciate that, and I'm glad your cat loves the, the hugs and kisses as uh, as much as she does. By the way, the hugs and kisses uh, for your cats is uh, available. Uh, you can go to uh, uh, Walmart.com. I don't know. I, Amazon.com may be out of them. I'm not sure. You can check out hugs and kisses at uh, Amazon.com or, or Walmart.com uh, for your cats. I, I think... I'm not sure about Amazon uh, having them. I, I know that, that Walmart still does, so check it out. Great time to give me a call, 866-870-KLA. i got to take a break. When we come back, Dennis, I'm sorry. You're going to be up next, Dennis. Now we're going to go to Valerie in Glendale with a bangle. Uh, 866-870-KLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. I'm Warren Eckstein. You're listening to The Pet Show. Ah, knock it off. There's no ugly dogs. You fall in love with the inside. Let me take a quick question here. We're going to go to Dennis in Castaic. Hey, Dennis. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Warren. Hey, I want to thank you for uh, recommending hugs and kisses about a month or so ago. I ran out of the glucosamine I used to give my pets, and I gave them the hugs and kisses. And I have three little dogs, and I can see the pep in their steps since they started taking those. So thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's why it has my name on it. So I see you want to answer yeah. my question. Hey, the, the, the question I would have for my dogs, of course, it'd have to be a family group huddle, is uh, I'd ask them, does anything I do bother you? <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? I'm sure they'd have plenty to answer for. Uh, what do you think? What do you think you do that bothers your dogs? Nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the per- it, just from, it just popped in your in my mind. You can me. My dogs have it made. They sleep in bed with us. <laughs> I, listen, it sounds to me like I want to come back as one of your dogs. Dennis, i got to move on. Great call, by the way. Give, keep giving them those, those hugs and kisses, and I appreciate it. Listen, we're going to break for the top of the hour. We have a whole hour to go. Don't go anywhere, Valerie. Plenty of time for your calls. Great time to give me a call. I do got some stuff to give away. The phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Quick break, then right back to all your calls. And the question of the day is, what would you ask your dogs or cats if you had that opportunity? I'm Warren Eckstein. You're listening to The pet show and if you love animals you love your dogs you love your cats but you don't understand why they behave the way they do maybe why is your cat missing the litter box why is your dog pulling you down the block why did you bring the new cat home and the old cat doesn't get along with him why is that rescue dog not housebroken all of these questions can be resolved in a positive upbeat hugs and kisses way so if you have a question or just want to share a great story about your pet, great time to give me a call. Uh, just a reminder, the question of the day here on the Pet Show, I'd love to hear from some of you guys. What question would you ask your dog or cat if you had the opportunity to ask your dog or cat a question? Am I a good guardian? Do I feed you right? Do I spend enough time with you? Uh, what question would you ask your dog or cat? Or if you have questions about their behavior, as I said, jumping, humping, digging, scratching, not using a litter box, great time to give me a call. I do have... Lucy Pet Food to give away, a couple of T-shirts to give away. So if you have a question or comment, uh, great time to call me. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Uh, plenty of time for your calls. Lots of uh, lots of uh, interesting things to, to talk about on the show as well. Uh, let me tell you. I got a couple of lines open, which is pretty rare. So if you have a question or comment, now is the opportunity to get through and and ask me a question. But also, I'd love to get some more people answering my question of the day. I mean, I'd love to find out what you would ask. I mean, there's so many questions I would ask Molly and Willie and all the different pets I, I've lived with over the years. So many questions I would ask them, and hopefully I would get the answers I want. But still coming up on today's show. In fact, I'm going to do this right now, okay? Everyone out there probably at one time in life or another was a teenager, right? I'm assuming you were. And everyone at one point in their life or another, maybe they were raising a teenage dog. And it was a difficult time. Do you know most dogs usually wind up back in the shelter like at a year or two years old? Those are those years that 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 they're testing and, and, and it breaks my heart. But I want you to listen to me carefully. Let me share this with you, okay? And then we'll ask some questions. Your teenage dog will find it very fun to find what annoys you the most and what gets them attention, even if it's negative attention, and then do it over and over and over again. 
They also tend to do this with other dogs they live with or meet for play dates. Don't take it personally. In fact, by overreacting to these moments by giving your dog attention, you're inadvertently reinforcing that behavior. How many times have you heard me say that? Don't let on that your dog is succeeding in pushing your buttons. Instead, calmly interrupt and redirect the behavior. The less of a fuss you make, the better off you are correcting their, here's a word I haven't used in a while, shenanigans. The more likely they'll be to give them up and try other ways to get your attention. So if you're not giving your dog, or your cat for that matter, but your dog enough attention, especially teenagers, teenage dogs, teenage cats, teenage people are always looking for uh, attention. And I remember, you (laughs) got I wish mom and dad, uh, if you're listening, and I know you are up there, uh, what what a what a tough time they had raising yours truly. Um, yeah, always looking for attention. I mean, doing things wrong because you you knew you were doing something wrong, and you may have known that you were going to get in trouble for it. But at the end, maybe mom would give you some milk and cookies. Well, dogs may not get the milk and cookies, but the bottom line is they realize what response is what, what they do to get your response. And and uh, so yeah. So anyone that have a teenage dog that they've raised, or or a dog that that's gone through their teenage years and and was one of those dogs that would figure out any way they could to possibly get your attention give me a call i'd love to hear from you 866-870-KRLA 866-870-5752 and as i said i do have some lucy pet food to give away i have some kitty lickies to give away as well some t-shirts maybe a couple of air horns also 866-870-5752 866-870-5752 i also want to hear from people out there uh, that may have adopted a, uh, a an older dog or an older cat. I had someone call me this week and said, you know, I wanted a shelter. I wanted to adopt a dog, but the only dogs they had were like three and four years old, and I wanted a puppy. And I said, well, how old are you? And they said to me, well, we're in our early six. And they said, why would you want a puppy? Why don't you think about going and adopting maybe a, a four, five, six-year-old dog? And they said, why? I said, well, first of all, you have a lot in common, arthritis, <laughs> <laughs> the same type of appetite, but more importantly, what a, what a, what a, a way of, of giving back to society by adopting one of these older dogs or older cats that never had that opportunity to find home. Also, that's a great question. Let me toss this out to you guys as well. If you adopted an older dog or an older cat, I want to hear from you and tell me about the incredible experience you had, and perhaps it was tough at the beginning. But towards the end, it really changed. So if you've adopted an older dog or an older cat, let me hear from you guys as well. 866-870-5752, 866-870-KRLA. That is the way uh, uh, to get to. Let me go to Edward first uh, Hey, and uh, Simi Valley. Hey, Edward, welcome to the Pet Show. Hello. How you doing, Edward? How are you today? Yeah, fine. How are you? I could not be better. How can I help you today, Edward? Great to talk to you. Uh, well, uh, about... Six weeks ago, I had to do some work in my neighbor's yard, so I went over into the yard carrying a couple four by fours, and, and the neighbor was present, and her two, I guess they're bulldogs, whatever, were present. They went up and were sniffing me, and I was kind of moving forward because I wanted to put the four by fours down, and and uh, one dog sniffing my leg, and then twirling around and jumped up on my leg, and I was kind of moving forward. I felt something sharp. I didn't realize till later I'd been bitten. So what, what I would like to know is uh, how should I handle being introduced to dogs I don't know in, in someone else's backyard? Well, first of all, how would you feel if someone walked in your backyard with a 4x4? Four four? Well, after, uh, after it happened, I thought about, I thought about you because I listened to you a lot. And you go, <laughs> well, what's the dog's point of view? What, what was the dog thinking? <laughs> you know, what, and, and then I realized, well, I'm just barging into the backyard. And even though the owner's there, they might be protective of the owner. And I'm kind of like pushing forward a bit without stopping and saying hello, and then uh, basically I asked for it is what my thoughts were. Well, Edward, you interloper, it's not your fault. It's really not your fault. But the bottom line is this. Whenever you're trying to meet a dog for the first time, if possible, it's always great to meet them off their territory. That's number one. Number two is what I would have done before you started carrying four by fours into the yard is I would have had them introduce you to the dog. Maybe you could give the dog some treats, get to know the dogs a little bit better. Um, you know, I had, I told you the story I had. I, you know, in my new home, I moved into Arizona. My next door neighbor, I heard him yell, shut up to my dog. My dog barked twice. Woof, woof. I heard him say, shut up to my dog. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, after I had a few words with the gentleman, but I haven't seen him since, by the way. 
to have a couple of words with him. But I think the more important part of it, has he said to me, you know, I heard your dog barking. I said, well, uh, let me introduce you to Molly and Willie. Once you get to know Molly and Willie, all you got to say, hey, Molly, and hi, Willie, and they'll come over and wag their tail and give you a hug and a kiss. But people don't, they don't realize that they just want to throw themselves. Well, look, dog looks for, just want to throw themselves into it. Just like when you get to meet someone, you got to feel them out a little bit. And dogs need to feel out the people they're being introduced to as well. So again, the way to do it at this point, what I would do is I would go over there. Maybe you can approach the dogs when he's walking them. If he walks them on a leash and collar, you already know their names. Maybe have a treat or a toy for them. And uh, then maybe come over to the house once or twice just for a few seconds. Uh, give them a toy or treat and then leave. And then maybe an hour later, go out into the yard with them and play with them. That's how you have to do it. Let them get to know that there's nothing to fear of you, nothing to be nervous about with you, and build up that confidence. And if you build up that confidence, the relationship will establish itself, I promise. Sounds good. Edward, you, uh, did, uh, what, what are you building with 4 by 4s at a church? <laughs> uh, well, actually, I was propping up a vine. The uh, few blocks on the wall cracked and were falling into the vine, so I had to go over there and lift them out of the vine and then prop up the vine growing on the wall, and then I have to rebuild the wall, so I have more work to do back there. So uh, I will be meeting the dogs again. So Yes, <laughs> meet them, meet sure them and, call, and call, call, me, call me back and let me know. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on hold. I'm not giving away a lot of stuff today, but I'm putting you on hold because I like you. I like everybody. But I'm going to send you a T-shirt that says, none of my friends walk upright. Wear that the next time you see the dogs. But it's so true. People just assume, assume that you can walk into a dog's backyard. Don't assume you can walk into my house unless I invited you. Don't assume you can do that, not because of Molly and Willie, but because of Warren. And it's no different with our dogs. We just assume sometimes, and we assume too much. All right, before I get back to the phone, Stacy, I'm going to get to you. Uh, Valerie, I'm going to get to you. Um, before we do that, I just got a, a text from one of my listeners. And the listener said, Warren, by the way, after reading your books and listening to you inside of you, have come to conclude that you're the most ethical person I know. Well, let me tell you what she's talking about. A lot of you may not know this. My nephew, Michael Rosenbaum, is an actor, does a lot of work. He played Lex Luthor on a show for many years called Smallville. Does a lot of other stuff as well. Just an incredible guy, an amazing actor. He does a podcast called Inside of You. As a matter of fact, I'm drinking out of one of his canisters right now that says Inside of You. Basically, what he does is he interviews a lot of celebrities, really well-known celebrities. But then he said to me one day, hey, hey, Unc, hey, Unc, why don't you come on my podcast and we'll talk? And I hesitated and hesitated and said, I don't know. Anyway, I went on the podcast, and Michael's incredible. It was the most most honest I've ever been in terms of talking my life from, from, from smoking marijuana as a teenager to being in Southeast Asia to being overseas to, to maybe even thinking about suicide after my first wife died. So it's, it's a very in, in, intense thing, but you really get to know who Warren is. So do this. You can go to my website, thepetshow.com, or you can go to my YouTube, youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein, and the, the uh, Inside of You podcast with Michael Rosenbaum is there, or you can just go to Inside of You podcast with Michael Rosenbaum and just follow down to see uh, Warren Eckstein. And I think for those people that have been listening to me for years and years and years and years, uh, very often they say, what, what is Warren really like? I mean... Why is he the way he is? And, 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 and what kind of, did he have a tough life? And, you know, I talk about when my first wife passed away at a young age. And I go into stuff that, that and, and all the animal training I did overseas. So check it out. It's called Inside of You. We did the podcast, I guess it's almost a year ago now. Uh, but a lot of people, I push it too much because there's a lot of private stuff in there. But if you want to listen to that, just go to Inside of You podcast with Michael Rosenbaum. Or you can go directly to my website, thepetshow.com or Instagram uh, or, uh, or uh, uh, YouTube dot com slash Warren X sign. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. But I do share a lot of stuff there. A lot of people always ask me, what do you really, really like? We listen to you on the radio, but what do you really, really like? Phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me do this. Um... Let me take a quick call from Valerie, then we'll get to Stacey. Hey, Valerie, welcome to the show. Uh, a quick call is not in my vocabulary. I well, love I got, you, Warren. And well, thank you. And back in 2016, my daughter was getting ready to go out of the country, and she said, Mom, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, I want you to take me over to the um, pet shop in uh, the valley where Dr. Warren is going to be. And she took me over, and I actually got to meet you. And I fell in love with you. 
I've called over the years, and you know about Mau Mau. Mau Mau was our rescue Egyptian Mau boy. And it means, by the way, cat cat in Egyptian. And you know he had a scarab on his uh, forehead. Mau Mau passed on a little over a month ago. And the first person I thought of calling was you. Are you there? I'm listening. I'm listening intently, yeah, okay. and I'm so I'm so sorry for the loss. It though out, it was during the week, and I got Suzette. I told Suzette all about, and she comforted me. So if I couldn't have Lauren, I had Suzette, and it was great, you know, just chatting with her. We are now the owners. Well, the owners no, we're the parents of Joey. Joey is a rescue boy, exotic cat rescue, same place, yeah, same place as we got Mau Mau, and in Northern California. I Val, Valerie, let me, let me, Valerie, Valerie, listen to me. Let me just stop you for a second, okay? I don't want to run out of time, but I want to, I want to, let me do that. I'm going to put you on hold. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more, and then we'll talk to Stacy as well. Um, great time to call me, by the way. The phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Uh, check out that podcast. I mean, for people that, that really want to delve into my head and, and figure out why you've been listening, many people have been listening to me for 44 years and, and watching me on, on TV for, for almost that long as well. So the bottom line is, I, I don't know how my nephew did it, but somehow he, he, he got me to do this podcast, and, and, and I think you'll find a, a, a whole lot of information. So check it out, Inside of You Podcast with me. All right, let me take a quick break here, then we'll get back to your phone calls. I promise, 866-870-CAROL-A. Got a couple of open lines, pretty rare here on the Pet Show. 866-870-5752. I still got some Lucy Pet Food to give away. Speaking about Lucy Pet Food, um, for almost six years now, God, is it that long? Six years now, you've heard me recommending and talking to you about Lucy Pet Ah, the doggy do blues. We are back on the pet show on more next time. Great time to give me a call if you got a question or a comment. Just want to answer my question of the day. What would your dog or cat, uh, what question would you ask your dog or cat? Am I good? Am I bad? Do I spend enough time with you? What questions would you ask your dog or cat? I want to know. Uh, give me a call. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Or any other questions, jumping, humping, digging, scratching, barking, whatever questions you may have. Or if you just want to brag about a, a recent dog or cat you uh, uh, you adopted. Um, we're going to get to you in a second, Stacey. Before that, we were speaking to my my friend Valerie in Glendale. Uh, Valerie and I spoke an awful lot. Uh, her cat, Mau Mau, had passed away. Now she has a new bangle she adopted. So let's go back to Valerie and get a quick update on her new adoption. Hey, Valerie, you still with me? New baby is Joey, and he's from the same rescue group we got Mau Mau from in Northern California. The uh, former owner of Joey, the daughter came back, found out she was allergic to cats, so she had to give up Joey. The same night as we lost Mau Mau, my husband said, honey, I don't know how you're going to take this, but I got to show you a picture of Joey. He showed me the picture, and Lauren, I believe Mau Mau was sending Joey to me. Well, listen, I'm a firm. A I'm a firm. Older, my husband and a friend went up to Fresno. The lady who had Joey came down. They met halfway, you know, down the state in Fresno and brought Joey to me. And I really believe that now uh, that Joey is. Uh, Mama was just uh, saying, "Hey, mom, this is a cat you have to have." And Joey is the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. You know what's and interesting, Valerie, Val, Valerie, let me let me stop. You know what's really interesting about what you just said, and I really got to move along here. We got busy. But what I really want to get across to you is that over the years, and especially when I was spending a lot of time in Europe, over the years, it's amazing to me how many times I've heard that when a dog or a cat has crossed the Rainbow Bridge, especially a dog or cat that had the incredible relationship with their guardians like Mau Mau had with you, um, that when the time comes for them to go out and either rescue or adopt another dog or another cat, very often they see so, so many similarities in that dog or cat that they rescued that there is 
assumption is that the dog or cat that crossed the Rainbow Bridge had something to do with this dog or cat now coming into their life. So I can't argue with that point, but part of it can also be the way the the guardian relates to animals. That may bring out certain things, but I I would not be one of those people that would say to you, you know what, Val, you're crazy, knock it off. I don't know. Maybe maybe Mau Mau is sending you a message and saying, you know what? I want you to now take Joey, and I want you to treat Joey as well as you treated me, and uh, Joey is going to be very similar to me in personality, and that's partially because of you. Sweet. The most cuddliest thing every single morning. He jumps up while well, he sleeps with us all night, and he sleeps between my husband and I. I call him the second well, third love of my life. My grandson's the second, husband's the first, Joey's the third, and he comes up and he will wrap his little paws around our neck and he'll just like lick us and say, hey mom, hey mom, it's time to get up. Well, I'm so, gl- I'm so glad that you found Joey. I gotta move on, but let me just tell you this. Put Joey number one and husband number three, okay? You'll be a lot better off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got to move on, but thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Keep me posted on your new relationship with uh, with Joey. And yeah, that, does, am I crazy or is it possible? I mean, I don't know. Reincarnation? Re- I, I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. Show me. I do believe that many of the animals I've adopted were so similar in personalities of... of uh, I, I guess I can say this on the air without... Uh, I'm going to get to you, Stacey and Cheryl, I promise. I guess I can say this on the air without the men in the white coats coming to me. When I first rescued my pet pig, Corky, who was 950 pounds, by the way, um, and then I rescued another 900-pound pig, or actually get to be 1,200, named Spotty. And, and the personalities, and one was a male, one was a female, the personalities of them... Or, or similar, and sometimes I question: Is it, is it me? Was it my wife at the time, Faye? Uh, no, it was. It was just something. Animals have. I don't know how to explain it. You know, I had a close friend of mine. I haven't spoken to him in years. The amazing Kreskin was a very, very good friend of mine, and 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 he always said to me, Warren, you know. I know what you're saying. Animals have this special ability. I I don't know what to describe it as, but they have this special ability. So perhaps when a dog or cat does cross the Rainbow Bridge, they will make sure that whatever your next dog or cat that comes into your life is also very slim with them. Great call, by the way. And I'm so glad that... Well, I'm not glad that Mau Mau passed away, but I'm so glad that Joey has found a great home like uh, like Valerie. Uh, let me do this. Let me take a break. When we come back, uh, Stacy, you're going to be up next, and she's going to talk about adopting an older cat. I've got to get to you. Also, Cheryl in Fountain Valley adopting older dogs. I want to get to you, uh, to you guys as well. Number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Also coming up, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. How much do your dogs absolutely remember? You know, there's a lot of new studies out there, and and how do dogs remember? What is episodic memory? What does that mean? We're going to talk about that. Answer your questions, 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Let's take a quick break, then get back to Stacey and Cheryl. Do you have an open line or two, by the way, 866 866- 870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. I want you guys to listen to me carefully. As I said earlier, you guys have been listening to me, many of you, for for over four decades. And you know, when I endorse or recommend or, or tell you about an organization... And we are back on the Pet Show on Warren Eckstein, that number 866-870-KRLA. Let me get back to the phone lines here. Uh, let's go to um, Stacy in Westlake Village. And we got Cheryl in Fountain Valley. We got Linny in Encino as well. Uh, Stacy, welcome to the Pet Show. Stacy, how are you? Hi. I adopted my kitty, Freddie, in 2008 when he was five years old from the shelter. He thanked me every day. He was, like, so grateful. And um, he, we had a wonderful 11 years together. He passed in 2019. And soon after that, this is also important, um, I adopted a kitty that um, had never been in a shelter. He's a wonderful guy, but 
he went through the terrible twos with me, and he would jump up on my curtains. And he would, I remember when they they tore down, and he fell down with them, and it cost me six hundred bucks. So if you, he's he's with me now, still of course, um, he's six now. But um, you avoid the terrible twos where they tear down expensive stuff. Those those uh, the shades cost me six hundred dollars to fix. I had a wonderful time. But see, this kid he hadn't suffered, and so he doesn't really understand. He's not quite as grateful as Freddie was because Freddie had been in a cage, and he was older and stuff. And so it, they're both wonderful, but it, it really does pay to adopt older animals. It really does. Yeah, my, mother, my mother said she wished she would adopt me when I was 20. <laughs> Instead of raising me, I was a horrible, horrible kid. I really was. That's a great, you know, I, I, it's so amazing to me. Listen, all animals need homes, okay? Young animals, old animals. The younger animals, the younger dogs, younger cats, gen- when I say younger, I mean under six months, usually uh, find it a lot easier to find a home than, than dogs and, and cats that are over a year old. And, and I honestly believe that when you adopt, I mean, I've adopted dogs at 16, 17 years old and cats even older than that. So the bottom line is, even if they're only with you for a short period of time, making that short period of time incredible makes makes life for me and, and so many other people out there worth going on. So I agree 100% adopting an older cat. Sometimes it has its advantage. You don't have to go through those terrible twos or those those teenage years, you know, where they stay out late or ask to borrow the car. Um, and, and so I'm so glad that you now... Now, how old was this? This cat was five years old, the new one, when you adopted him? No, he was under two. Oh, under two, the new and, ones, um, under the, two, the, yeah. The, yeah, because uh, my friend had actually... Uh, uh, somebody else had adopted this baby of a feral mom that she rescued, but the, she, the girl kept threatening to dump it in the the uh, shelter. So I said, "I'll take him." So she brought him to me. Oh, well, so, so he was under two when I got him. He was not Freddie. He was completely different from Freddie. Um, but uh, Freddie, Freddie was like he was a Siamese, and he was very outgoing, very verbal. He would run around and meow, and um, Oreo just stares with his eyes wide open at me. He's really funny. So, oh, well, let me take a guess here. Oreo is black and white. <laughs> Black and white. <laughs> I, I am amazing. I am amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, so it's, I was with my wife Denise the other day, and we we're going somewhere, and we saw this uh, this. Uh, uh, um, uh, black and white cat or black and white I forgot what it was he said that's why they call them tuxedos I said Denise how long have we been together how long have you heard me use the word tuxedo <laughs> that's why they call them yeah they're black with the white on their chest anyway Stacy, great yeah, call I'm going to do this go ahead no, what were you going to say oh he doesn't have the tuxedo but you know what I'd like a t-shirt a red t-shirt uh, let me see if we have a red one well I'm going to put you on hold or if you don't and... have a red one black and white's fine you will get one 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 listen you're talking to someone who's colorblind so when I <laughs> <laughs> when I tell Julie to send it, I will tell her. Anyway, I'm going to put you on hold, and a T-shirt will be on. So, by the way, um, if you'd like to get one of those T-shirts, and by the way, the money for those T-shirts is uh, goes directly into my Hugs and Kisses Animal Fund, the T-shirts read like this. On the front of them, uh, there's... Uh, some animation and then it says none of my friends walk upright which by the way was my line I copyrighted that years ago none of my friends walk upright in the back it says Warren X on the pet show.com by the way if you'd like to get one of those t-shirts I don't know how much I think they were maybe 13 14 dollars I don't know <clears throat> go to my website thepetshow.com don't forget that the thepetshow.com remember when you order a t-shirt you're helping out my hugs and kisses animal fund and I appreciate that uh, 866-870-CAROL the phone number uh, let's uh, do, 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 do. Uh, before I go to you Cheryl and I go to you Lenny and I will get to your calls I promise I want to share this with you okay because this is important for me um, I want to talk a little bit about episodic memory because a lot of my listeners have dogs out there but it affects cats as well current experts in biology believe that dogs have what is known as episodic memory, which simply means that they remember things because of a feeling, such as smell, bonding moments, dinner times, when they come home. A smell is associated with past events and memory. So a smell from a long time ago coming back into a dog's uh, nose, uh, they will remember something, either positive or negative, from years ago. Uh, uh, And their cognitive abilities are, are, are great as well. So episodic memory. So a lot of people, all dogs don't, yeah, they do remember. And ex- I'll give you a prime example. When I was studying in Europe, uh, if we took a dog to an area where something really, really bad happened, maybe five, ten years ago, they might know not know exactly what happened, but they do associate that area with something negative happening in that area. So I'm a firm believer that dogs do not forget. Dogs have incredible episodic memory. And what episodic simply means is that what happened at one time is so important to them that it triggers their memory 
a year, two, three, four, five years down the road. So dogs do have episodic memory. So be careful what you say in front of your dog because they may not forget it. 866-870-CAROLY, the phone number. Let's go to uh, Cheryl, Fountain Valley. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing great. What's up? Um, I just wanted to tell you that I adopt only old dogs. I love you already, Cheryl. When you say old, what's old to you? <laughs> I, I mean, well, when, when I lose a dog, I go on to either the computer or friends or whatever, and I yeah. put in my parameters, which are the dog has to be over 10 years old. Can oh, have God bless issues. you, man. God bless you. And, and uh, it doesn't have to be cute. And that's what I adopt. I usually have about three at a time, and they have to be under 20 pounds because I can't lift over that. And I love it. I wouldn't do anything well, else. Yeah, so someone, let me run something by you, Cheryl. So in other words, when you adopt these dogs, and, you know, over 10 years old, and you're like me, you've adopted them, and sometimes they don't live as long as we want them to live with us, but we know that at least when they do cross the Rainbow Bridge, somehow, some way, uh, we got across to them that, that they mean something, uh, that they were loved when they crossed. And I think that's so, so important, and there's nothing more devastating to me. Uh, and, you know, I spent so many hours and hours in my life at shelters, and, and I'm going back to the old days and in, in, in the, the 70s and the late 60s and when things at shelters were not nearly as good as they are now. Not that they're great, but not nearly as good as they are now. And, and, and when you go there and you see like a, a 10-year-old dog or a 12-year-old dog that may have had a good life and a good home, but their, their, their guardians passed away and the family brought the dog or, or, or to the shelter, it just breaks my heart. And I don't see why more and more people don't consider adopting uh, an older dog or an older cat from a shelter. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that when you do adopt an older pet, uh, they know you saved their lives, and there's no question in my mind that they pay you back every day for the rest of theirs would you agree with that oh my gosh absolutely and i i you know sometimes friends will say to me how can you do that isn't it sad when you have to let them go well of course it's sad when you have to let them go but you have to get over your sadness you know you cry for a day or whatever you need to do and then you think about the next one that was left behind or abandoned and if i think too much about that i could go crazy so i know you're absolutely you're absolutely right you're 100 percent right and the thing is for example if you think about going through the sadness aspect of it think about the sadness that dog or cat would go through if he never got into the home with you cheryl Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's why a couple days, two or three days, maybe we'll go by, and then it's on the computer and find another one. I'm, I'm going to share. I'm going to share something with you guys. I don't. I, I don't think I've ever shared before. In my early, early days, when I was living on uh, uh, ramen noodles, okay, I would spend mm-hmm. a lot of my time at shelters and rescues up and down the East Coast, primarily New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, maybe a little in Massachusetts. And what I would do, and, and there wasn't a whole lot back then. There wasn't a whole lot of behaviorists and trainers out there. Number one, and number two, not a whole lot of trainers and behaviorists that were going into shelters. And, and I felt that when I would go into a shelter and I would see an older dog or an older cat or even a younger dog cat that was depressed or, or going through the loss and, and was brought into a shelter mm-hmm. and, and from a home, um, I started realizing that this is where I had to be. This is exactly where Warren mm-hmm. had to be. So I would literally spend days and days on end going to different shelters and some I serve on the board for and, and just kind of working out their behavioral issues. And if it's one thing I admire now about some of the shelters and rescues out there is now they understand the concept, not just of physiological well-being, but behavioral, mental, and psychological well-being as well, which is just as important because with depression comes illness. We know that now. So that's why I just admire people like you so much, Cheryl, and I appreciate your call, and I I will donate a gift to an organization in your name. How's that? Yes, because, by the way, I have donated to Delta for years and years, and I visited there a couple times. Great place. Uh, isn't it a great place? I'll, 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 oh, send, yeah. Le- yeah. I'll send Leo your yeah. love, and I appreciate that phone call. You okay. have a great day All now. Right. Bye-bye, Shell. Bless you okay, for what you, you do. Bye. Bye-bye. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Quick break, then right back to Lenny here on The Pet Show. I'm Warren next time. We are back on the petrol. Hey, Lenny, just before I get to you, I just want to go over this quickly. What are the five five cat personality types, according to this new study? Number one is the inquisitive cat. You know what that means. He's playful, alert, and always checking things out. Then there's the cat's cat. That's the cat that only gets along with other cats. The human cat, the cat that only gets along with humans and doesn't get along with other cats. You have the avid hunter always chasing things around. And then you have the cantankerous cat. So those are the, the inquisitive cat, the cat's cat, the human cat, 
the avid hunter, and the cantankerous cat. According to a brand new study, those are those are the five different personality types. Do I agree with that? Absolutely not. There's probably a hundred different personality types. Hey, Lenny, welcome to the pet show. Hey, Lynn, welcome to the show. Lenny. Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. You're listening to the radio, Lenny. Hang up the radio, Lenny. Oh, God, Lenny, don't go. Welcome to the show, Lenny. Lenny, Lenny. Yes, yes. Hi. Lenny, hi. Hi, Lenny. How are you? Oh, I didn't know how to do it. So, um, That's okay. Thank you for taking my call. It's my uh, joy, Lenny. What's up? Thank you. Well, we rescued a cat maybe 10 years ago and very fussy eater. And we've tried expensive and we've tried uh, less expensive. The only thing that made him really go for his food was a supplement from um, Purina Pro Plan. Yeah. And it was sprinkled on top of his food, but it was for digestive issues, for di- diarrhea. Can you recommend a, a multivitamin that I can sprinkle on top of his food that will make him want to eat it? Yeah, I'm going to, listen, I'm going to brag a little bit. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to do a commercial for it in just a few seconds. My own Hugs and Kisses supplement. Uh, There's one formula for dogs, one for cats. So that was the supplement you heard recently where the lady had called up about. Um, I don't think, I I, I hate to say this, I don't think I have any at the office. Otherwise, I would send you some, uh, Lenny, but we're out of stock at the office. It's going to take a while to get them up. But in the meantime, if you'd like to get the Hugs and Kisses supplements, I know they are available at uh, at, uh, Amazon.com, and I know they're available also at walmart.com i hate to say i can't send it to you but i just don't have any in stock at the moment um so so i wish i did but anyway that's that's the food they recommend but what i'm going to do instead of that okay because i can't send you the hugs and kisses which by the way you can get it at either amazon or 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 walmart what i'm going to do is i'm going to send you something different at least to get the cat uh, to eat the food better i'm going to send you some kitty lickies from lucy pet okay kitty lickies is one of those items it's not a vitamin mineral supplement it's just something nutritionally and something tasty enough that's going to help encourage your cat to eat what it should be eating. So let me do that. Let me send you some kitty uh, kitty lickies. You can sprinkle that or break it over his food, and that would be beneficial. But again, the hugs and kisses, as I said, uh, I don't have any in the office, but they are available uh, at uh, walmart.com. I'm sure, I think Amazon. I don't know if Amazon is out or not. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the future. But anyway, check out the hugs and kisses at walmart.com. Uh, in the meantime, let me put you on hold. Uh, the lovely Suzette will pick up, and we're going to send you some kitty lickies from my good friends over over at Lucy Pet Products, and I do appreciate that phone call. Um, let me just remind everyone, I'm not going to take another call. Uh, i got some stuff I want to talk to you guys about. Um, but I just remind everyone that when I get off the air here, you might be driving around now. It might be a great day. Maybe you're doing something. Um, when I get off the air, I go to uh, do my national and Canadian radio show for Radio America, also for Armed Forces Radio, and that show starts as soon as I get off the air here at 1 o'clock, okay? Uh, and you can call that number at 1 o'clock. And by the way, uh, my listeners in uh, Southern California uh, will have a jump start because the show starts at 5 minutes after 1. So if you start calling at 1 o'clock, you'll be ahead of the, uh, ahead of the game, so to speak. And just remember that the number I'm going to give you, don't start calling it till 1 o'clock, but it goes directly. Directly, directly uh, to Washington, D.C., to Radio America. Uh, so be patient. Let it ring, ring, ring. They eventually will pick it up, I promise. Here is that number, 877-725-8255. That is the way to get to. Again, I got a lot of people ask me about that podcast I said I did with my nephew, uh, Michael Rosenbaum. And the reason I brought that up is because someone had just sent me a, a text saying uh, that it was the first time they really got into that into my head and understood and it a lot of private stuff that if you want to check it out you can go to uh, inside of you podcast inside of you podcast with michael rosenbaum my nephew by the way you probably know him from lex luther on smallville but when you go there just write in my name warren x and you can listen to the uh, the uh, the podcast we did together we did it a while back but i'm first really starting to let people know about it now so check that out as well uh let me do this let me take a quick break here at the at the pet show uh, again that number for the network show but don't start 
start calling to 1 o'clock is 877-725-8255. Listen, we're talking about the Hugs and Kisses Vitamin Mineral Supplement. Now, these are my own supplements. Uh, they are available. I, I don't know if Amazon is out of them or not. Knock it off. We all know that my dog's better than your dog. Hey, we're back on the petrol. Let me give you that number again for the national show. Starts in exactly, uh, I guess, uh, three and a half minutes. That phone number is 877-725-8255. Same type of show. Uh, so if you have questions or comments, I didn't get to answer your, your calls today. Uh, you can start calling at 1 o'clock, 877-725-8255. Uh, also, just a reminder, if you're not following me on YouTube or my other social media, you should. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but the importance is, you know, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. This way, you'll always be in touch with Warren, no matter what, and I'll be able to guide you through any questions or comments you may be having with your pet issues. So check out Facebook.com slash Warren Pet Talk. That's Facebook.com slash Warren Pet Talk. Or better yet, I'm always recommending that you go to my YouTube channel. It's free. YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. Or if you prefer Instagram at Warren Eckstein. Now, why am I sending you here? Because obviously on the radio, I don't have the opportunity to go into the detail or a lot of the really, really important things I want to share with you guys. But for example, on my YouTube channel or the website, thepetshow.com, I can go in depth. As a matter of fact, on the YouTube channel, there are segments, videos there that are long, but they're also what we call shorts. These are less than a minute long, but tips on everything from litter box issues to, to your dog schlepping you down the block, the humping and jumping and barking and digging. So I want you to check out youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein, youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein. Subscribe. It's free. And as I said, I do share an awful lot of information there as well. And if you go to youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein, you can go down and check out the uh, the podcast I was talking about with my nephew, Michael, inside of you podcast. Now, I didn't talk about it for a long time because I do get very, very personal on it about myself. Uh, but if you'd like to know more about uh, where this crazy guy came from, uh, check out inside of you podcast. You can check it out on my website, thepetshow.com. It's also on my uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein. Real important stuff. I want to leave you with this also, and this is really important. You know, it's so critical. Many of the questions I get here on the pet show is my dog is doing this wrong or my cat is doing this wrong or my dog doesn't do this and my dog doesn't do that. One of the most important things any good pet guardian can do, any good pet guardian, and this is critical, is to literally... Take the time to watch your dogs and watch your cats every single day. Really get into the knowledge of what their everyday behavior is it. What time do they eat? What time do they go out? When do they want to play? How are they sleeping? What time do they get up? When do they get anxious? When do they get nervous? By knowing what your dog or cat is doing, what their normal behavior is on a regular basis, you can indicate changes that occur and know that action has to be taken. Again, that number for the network show starting about a minute from now, 877 7 8255. Until next week, give all your pets a big hug and a kiss for you, a special one between the ears for me. Thank you, Suzette. Thank you, Alex. We'll talk to you all next week right here on The Pet Show.